Hello, welcome to this video where we look at some questions on finding the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Uh, it should be about three examples here. Uh, two of them, the last two, are extreme examples when the ratio test or the root test gives you something like a zero or infinity. This is a standard example here. We have a summation n equals one to infinity where we have four x plus one is raised to the n and that's all on top of n squared. Seems pretty simple, only those two terms. I really want you to do this for the first thing. I want you to recognize what the center is. The whole part that involves x needs to be set equal to zero. The x value that makes the, the, the term zero is the center. And so when you do that for this particular question, we have four x plus one is, uh, um, then equal to zero, that's going to mean then that x is negative one-fourth. So you're, you're definitely going to converge at negative one-fourth. It's just a series of zeros. And then this question is, well, what do you add to that? What do you subtract from that? How do you get this interval? And we get that by using the ratio test. And so the ratio test officially says, take the limit as n goes to infinity on a sub n plus one divided by a sub n absolute value bars. The shortcut to that is to basically replace the n's with n plus 1's in their own fractions, each term, with um, in the place where they're at. So numerator, denominator. And then um, in the gaps, put the original terms that match up to that. That takes care of the whole dividing and rejuggling and everything algebraically. And now we can look at these individually. Break up the exponent, the n plus 1 exponent, and then that will allow us a chance to be able to cancel. The 4x plus 1 to the n can now cancel now that we've broken it up. When it comes to the n squared on top of n plus 1 quantity squared, that's just going to go to 1. So you have the absolute value of 4x plus 1. And we need for that to be our less than 1 for convergence. Now, we have to solve this inequality, and it's an absolute value inequality. Okay, you can't just look at this and say, oh, yeah, that's, that's for sure it has to be this. So we're able to get the, the fact that a is um, negative one-fourth, and now we're going to solve this by factoring out the four, dividing by it, and then we'll have the absolute value of x plus a fourth less than a fourth. Basically, what this means to you is that you go from negative a fourth, you get to add and subtract a fourth. Let's look at a number line. Negative one fourth is your center, and then we add one fourth to get to zero. We take away one fourth to get to negative one half. Okay, your radius of convergence is one fourth. Okay, all right, great. So the interval of convergence are all numbers between negative one half and zero, but we're not done yet. We got to check the endpoints. Perhaps we can include zero. Perhaps we can include negative one half. Let's check negative one half. It's kind of small down here. Sorry if you can't see it in the corner. We're going to let um, x equal negative one half. Go into the series, replace x with negative one half. Okay. Multiply that by four, you get negative two. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. This is your alternating 1 over n squared. It's going to converge for sure. Alternating series test. What about when x equals 0? Then you're looking at just 1. It's raised to integer value, so it's always going to be a 1. This is 1 over n squared. That's a p series. That's converging as well. So both the endpoints converge. You can use square brackets when you get the endpoints in. Parentheses if it was to diverge. The interval of convergence, abbreviated IOC, is a negative one half to zero, including both. Radius of convergence, you added and subtracted a fourth from negative a fourth, so R equals one fourth. And you did it. You could have solved that inequality a different kind of way just by um, making the inside of the absolute value between minus one and one, 
um, your choice about how you want to do the algebra there. You can try to isolate x minus a in absolute value bars, or you could do the other way of breaking out the absolute value bars and putting two inequalities. Okay, so that's our first example. Now with these next two examples, something strange is going to happen. Not, not a normal kind of thing where our limit ends up being zero or infinity. Um, and also something strange is being able to use the root test. If you can write everything to the nth power, then yeah, it's perfect for the root test. Or maybe n squared power. There's other options there. And in this particular example, yeah, everything is to the n. It's straightforward. Let's put it all together and raise it to the n as a, as a unit. 3 times the quantity of x minus 5 over n raised to the n. Okay. And you know how the root test works. We have to raise everything to the 1 over n power. I probably shouldn't be using this rad root n thing but basically I should I, I should probably redo this and raise it to the one over n but yeah you see how they cancel and just get what's underneath there's no a sub n plus one to worry about no long drawn out process and n is going to infinity x is any individual number that you can plug in okay but it doesn't really matter what x is because the numerator will be constant and it's the denominator who's blowing up to infinity as n goes to infinity. Constant divided by something that's blowing up is going to be zero. What does this mean for you? I don't care what x is. I will always be less than one. No value of x will make this limit bigger than one. There is no value of x that will make this diverge. Every value of x will make it converge. We get convergence no matter what x is. That means we have the entire real line, minus infinity to infinity as the interval of convergence. I guess officially the center's at zero, so we can add infinity and take away infinity if you want to label it. The root, um, this, this particular example gives us that the radius of convergence is a ha uh, equal to um, infinity. Okay, so if you're ever doing the ratio test or the root test, doesn't, this isn't always going to happen, but if it ever happens, just know the conclusion. If, if it doesn't matter what x is, that means x can be anything. Okay, be it from the ratio test, as we have laid it labeled here, or from the root test, as we did in our example. Okay, all right, one more example where the other strange thing happens where you end up with infinity. All we can do is flip this thing and we'll have infinity. So let's see, let's see about that. Um, yes, the power series converges for all x. Okay, great. So then with this one here, we have n factorial on top of x minus 1 to the x minus 7 to the n uh, times x minus 7 to the n, and all that's on top of 2 to the n. So factorial throws off our chance to be able to use the root test, the 2 to the n and the x minus 7 to the n. That's root test, but the factorial throws that out. So we do the ratio test. n plus 1 factorial in the numerator of its own fraction, 2 to the n plus 1 in the denominator of its own fraction, x minus 7 to the n plus 1 in the numerator of its own fraction. Okay, then you take the original terms that match up and you put them in their respective places. You break apart exponents, the n plus 1 exponents get broken apart. And then you break apart factorials so that you can get cancellation. Start with the bigger factorial and take off enough until you cancel with the smaller factorial. Okay, so we do n plus 1 times n factorial. 2 to the n times 2 to the 1, x minus 7 to the n times x minus 7 to the 1, and we get cancellation in each fraction this time. n factorials go away, 2 to the n's go away, x minus 7 to the n's go away, and we're left with the product of n plus 1 and x minus 7 all divided by 2. But n's going to infinity, and x is a constant no matter what that part is, it's not going to stop us from going off to infinity. This limit is infinite. Okay. It'll never converge. Infinity is always greater than 1. No value of x will make this limit be less than 1. That will all of a sudden give us convergence. But wait, remember now, I didn't look at the center on this one, but the center is x equals 7. Okay. So, 
we're guaranteed convergence at the center. I mean, the series will be a bunch of zeros if x is equal to 7. Your coefficients will change, but your coefficients will be multiplied by 0. And so, um, so then the way you write this is kind of strange. You, you converge at 7 only. There's no radius of convergence. You don't get to add or subtract anything away from that 7. There's no interval, really. It's more like a set. That's called a singleton set. A set with only one element in it. 7. That's your interval of convergence. Okay, so this is the second strange thing that might happen if you're doing the ratio test or the root test and you get infinity for your limit. The interval of convergence is the singleton point x equals a for the center and the radius of convergence is 0. Okay, all right, great. That's the end of this video. Um, hopefully that was uh, good for you. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and I'm here to help you through this Calc 2 journey. Um, this is the, pretty much going to be um, the last video that I have uh, to make for the Power Series uh, set of videos. It's about eight or nine videos, and um, hopefully by the time you're done watching all of them, you get a good grasp of what a power series is and why we care about it. What do we use it for? And then we're getting ready for what's coming next, which is Taylor series. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.